Welcome to the Scapular Apostolate. My name is Timothy Schultz, and today we are going to discuss two apparitions that are not very well known that occurred in Rashiv, Ukraine. But first, let's start with a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Throughout the 20th century, there have been multiple apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Most notable are Fatima and Akita in the 1970s. The messages of Fatima and Akita are essentially for the world to convert, for the world to turn their hearts to God, to stop sinning, to pray the rosary daily, and essentially there is a primary actor in these messages, and that is Russia. But there are two apparitions that occurred in Rashiv, Ukraine, also in the 20th century. And they're interesting in that multiple people witnessed the apparitions, but also they are very prophetic. The first one occurred May 12th, 1914, just before the First World War. 22 farmers outside of the Holy Trinity Church in Hrashiv saw the Blessed Virgin Mary. And her message was that there will be a war. Russia will become a godless country. Ukraine as a nation will suffer terribly for 80 years and will have to live through the world wars, but will be free afterwards. And as we all know, Ukraine lost their independence shortly after the First World War, and they lost it until 1991. So that message alone uh, was definitely prophetic in that she predicted the First World War, and then she also predicted their independence. So she appeared again in 1987, and the message in 1987 that she gave was this. I have come on purpose to thank the Ukrainian people because you have suffered most for the Church of Christ in the last 70 years. I have come to comfort you and to tell you that your suffering will soon come to an end. Ukraine will become an independent state. Do not forget those who have died in the Chernobyl disaster. Chernobyl is a reminder and a sign for the whole world. Forgive your enemies. Through you and the blood of the martyrs will come the conversion of Russia. Repent and love one another. The times are coming which have been foretold as being those in the end times. See the desolation which surrounds the world, the sin, the sloth, the genocide. Pray for Russia. Oppression and wars continue to occupy the minds and hearts of many people. Russia, despite everything, continues to deny my son. Russia rejects real life and continues to live in darkness. If there is not a return to Christianity in Russia, there will be a third world war. The whole world will face ruin. Teach the children to pray. Teach them to live in truth and live yourselves in truth. Say the rosary. It is the weapon against Satan. He fears the rosary. Recite the rosary at any gathering of people. So these messages should echo or sound very familiar to Our Lady of Fatima. She talked about the Second World War in Fatima. She prophesied that there would be a Second World War greater than the First. Is this to cause us fear? Not necessarily. What it should cause us is to desire to pray more, to pray the rosary more, to educate children, especially children, about the rosary, about the Hail Mary, to educate children about the Blessed Virgin Mary, which we've talked many times about on this channel, that that is not happening. Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary has waned. We ourselves are not doing what we need to do to usher in uh, the, this era of peace of which the Blessed Virgin Mary talks about, 
in both Fatima, and she also stated this in Hrashiv, uh, Ukraine. Now, I just want to make a note here. The apparitions in Hrashiv, Ukraine are not approved. They are not disproved, but they are not approved. However, there are some interesting facts. Over, they say, around a half a million people witnessed the miracle that occurred in Hrashiv. And what was the miracle? Well, that same church in 1914, where the 22 farmers witnessed the Blessed Virgin Mary and heard her message, that same church in 1987, um, by the way, that was one year exactly that this occurred, uh, one year after the Chernobyl disaster. There was a, an aura or a silver light that shone around the church that many people saw, originally witnessed by Marina Kitson. She was a 12-year-old girl, but then many thousands and thousands upon thousands witnessed this. Again, Ukraine at the time was under Russian control. They were under the KGB rule, which, as we all know, was an absolute atrocious, demonic, diabolical control, orchestrated famine, genocide, terrible atrocities that the Ukrainian people endured. But suffice it to say that uh, the miracles that occurred, the KGB could not stop the crowds. They came from the furthest parts of Russia all over to witness the miracle that was occurring of this aura. Even the KGB tried to stop uh, the, the aura by putting a tarp over the church, which was not successful um, because, again, the Blessed Virgin Mary she is extremely powerful, and her message will be made known to the world. But they also say that the, there was a grace because of the Blessed Virgin Mary's presence that the KGB was not as ruthless, was not as violent towards the pilgrims that were going to witness uh, this great, this great sight. So let's break this down. Russia is the center of Our Lady's messages throughout the 20th century. Russia. The, the nation which did become godless, the nation which infected many other nations with godlessness has become the center focus. And let's just face it, over the last hundred years, what have we witnessed? Have we witnessed a return to the faith? Have we witnessed a return to prayer and not doing sin? No, we haven't. We've seen more sin infect this world than arguably any other time in history, just because of the prevalence of the internet, the prevalence of all of the luxuries that we have to be able to partake in as many of the, the sins as we wish to. So we have seen probably a, an exponential increase in sin. Not only that, but nearly worldwide abortion or the slaughter of children. So this is also echoing uh, the prophecy of Isaiah, what has become good will become bad, what has become sweet will become bitter, and vice versa, what is bitter will become sweet, and what is evil will become good. So our society has turned into uh, almost a rebellious nature of pursuing sin, of institutionalizing sin, of making it worldwide. And in fact, if you try to criticize sin, you yourself might be put in uh, some type of a punishment. So our times are dire. And why does she bring up Chernobyl? Well, we all know that Chernobyl was the nuclear meltdown that occurred in Russia. And it was a disastrous event. Many thousands of people died. But it was an example, as Our Lady said, of what will come if there is not a conversion of Russia, but also a return of men's hearts to Christianity. And Pope John Paul II stated that the world has turned away from the messages of Fatima. So it's our duty in our own capacity to be vigilant, to be watchful, to be, increase our prayer life, to increase sacrifices and penances, which it's not always fun. We know that. But it is our duty to do this in our own life, in our own way. But then also to evangelize, to make the messages of Fatima, to make the messages of Rashiv known to the world so that we can usher in peace, so that we can live in a good society, in a good life. 
And those messages are primarily make acts of reparation of the offenses to the Immaculate Heart for the offenses against the Immaculate Heart, doing the five first Saturdays, praying the rosary, going to confession, spending 15 minutes in meditation on the, the decades of the rosary, but also to wear the brown scapular, as Sister Lucia said. Uh, she said that every, Our Lady wants everyone to wear the brown scapular, and in fact, they're inseparable. We talk about that a lot too, the rosary and the scapular. You've got your sword and you've got your armor. No one goes into battle with just a sword, and no one goes into battle with just an armor. You've got to have both. So we need to proclaim these messages worldwide as much as we can in our own capacity. It's easy to get caught up in our daily routines, to get caught up in our daily lives, to say that we don't have time to pray the rosary, to say that we don't have the ability to evangelize. Uh, in my own life, I can reflect how many missed opportunities I've had to engage people with truth, not to uh, condemn people, but to be able to discuss the beauty of the faith. So many missed opportunities. And I'm sure we all have that same experience. So these messages, yeah, it, it, it's they're they're a little bit uh, fearful, right? They cause a little bit of fear. And and, and let's just say the reality of things. Uh, Russia just put their Sarmat uh, nuclear uh, warhead on combat duty. They just put it in combat readiness. It's ready to be deployed, apparently. So, of course, is that just another one of those fears and rumors? Will that happen? We don't know. But one thing is interesting, too, about that is that the nickname for that nuclear missile is Satan 2. So, if you're not acting in truth and good, then you will uh, eventually and inadvertently, potentially, not even knowingly, you will be pushed along the path of the world, the flesh, and the devil. This is why there is that quote from St. Paul, we are not battling against flesh and blood, we are battling against powers and principalities. Because if you're not keeping yourself preserved, you will not be able to persevere in the good, the true, and the beautiful. That's our duty, is to enter into the truth with the Blessed Virgin Mary. And let's think about this. Just another thing that I want to leave you with is that Sister Lucia said in the 1950s that what made Our Lady so sad is that nobody is listening to her, neither the good nor the bad. And that should encourage us to rise up so that we all enter in to listening to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to making her messages known. After all, she is our mother. We don't want to make our mother sad, and we want to help her save souls. So go to our website, scapularap.com, see how you can learn more about our mission, buy scapulars, spread the devotion, hand them out to people on the street. You know, we have people that sometimes buy like 500 or 100 or 200, uh, and they just hand them out. We have one individual who went on a road trip and he just handed out scapulars to the homeless. Uh, you don't have to be Catholic to put the scapular on. And many miracles have occurred with non-Catholics when they do uh, put the scapular on and wear it uh, throughout their life. So with that, let's pray the rosary daily. Let's wear the brown scapular. Let's make acts of reparation or the offenses that are against the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let's comfort our mother. She is physically in heaven, body and soul, and she is a very real person. She is a very real mother that wants to take care of us. She wants to make us happy. She wants us to be in heaven with her forever. And with that, let's set this world on fire. Thanks for listening. God bless. Thank you.